okay. I, I've become a sort of a living museum in which I have to repeat on doing the same thing because it was, uh, well, okay. Uh, so maybe tomorrow we do something a little different. But we start today um, with music. Yeah, music, we, we always have music. Um, and the idea is not only to have fun with the music, but also to think about uh, what appears to be something of great interest to people um, like you, or like most of you, or like some of you, uh, which is uh, how, do, uh, how does a great or, or a large group of people come together uh, and work in harmony yeah, um, um, doing something which is also fruitful but also enjoyable and uh, <coughs> playful. We play music, um, which has uh, obvious uh, uh, enjoyment for the individual, but also an effect of uh, a, a, a gathering. Uh, think of a rock concert. Think of a even a classical music concert. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, obviously most of the time people around you are just nuisance. But sometimes, when people do come together, then the experience is even larger than your individual experience. So, uh, uh, we're going to turn off the lights. Not too much, so you won't fall asleep. Ha! Huh. Is that good enough? Okay. And listen to this. And listening to this, please think about um, um, what makes this uh, harmony possible. Yeah? Um, I think harmony is never to be taken for granted, no matter what uh, size of group of people we, we, we speak about. Uh, I always love, uh, like to think about the example of uh, uh, marriage life, which is a quite a small institution. But harmony, well, just two people, right? Two adults. Sometimes three, but normally it's, it's two. And, 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 and think about all the effort you have to put into creating an album. But you're too young. You don't know anything about it. You live happily. You OK. Um, um, uh, when you have an orchestra, um, the chances for a chaotic uh, uh, um, a behavior is, uh, are very large. H has it ever happened to you that you came into a concert hall just a few minutes before the orchestra actually starts the concert? So you know what happens. You're sitting there. Orchestra musicians get organized on the stage doing what? Tuning. Oh, tuning is a, well, I would say quite an advanced st stage in which you actually say to other people, we want to work together, so let's find a common yeah, uh, ground to do it. Even before tuning, they do something which is very, people here act very strangely. But what I was saying is, just before tuning the whole orchestra, you have a very individual uh, type of behavior in which people have to do things that um, make them ready for the beginning of the concert. If you happen to be, uh, uh, to be a, a trumpet player, the last thing you want is to have a, you know, this kind of a kicks uh, at the beginning of the concert because there's no way to hide. No world to hide. Once this happens, you're dead. Uh, so what you do is warm up the instrument and warm your fingers yourself. If you happen to be a violin player, you're doing blah, 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 all those, huh? to get ready. Now, when you as audience are sitting in the hall, what is it that you hear when they all do this warming up? Chaos. Chaos. A fantastic chaos. An interesting chaos, but still a chaos. And this chaos gives me, as a conductor, a, a great moment of joy. I'll tell you what it is. I come into the concert hall, and a group of people doing blah, 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 blah. Do you want to warm up? Warm up a little bit. Vocally. <laughs> And in front of this beautiful noise, I, happen, I just walk across the stage um, onto my podium, the little you know, uh, cubicle of a conductor, open space cubicle. Um, and in front of that noise, I do a very little insignificant, uh, almost, nothing very sophisticated, nothing very pomp, uh, gesture, something like this. And with this very small gesture, uh, a small miracle occurs. Uh, where thousands of different voices suddenly come together to become the first organized sound of the piece. Now, this transformation from complete chaos to, in a split second, to order is very enjoyable. It, I think it's also very enjoyable for the uh, players, but for conductors, it's also a bit risky. Tell you why. I might just start to believe that it's all thanks to me. You see, all those 
the very talented people that are sitting here making all those noises, and they need me to come and do this. And suddenly, we have harmony. Now, well, I'm old enough, as you can see, to know that it's not exactly the case. I mean, if I do a very beautiful, aesthetic, musical, whatever, uh, movement, but somehow it falls on an, uh, well, you know, people might not have the same music in front of them. You might have Beethoven music, and you might have Mozart or Gershwin, so it won't work. Or maybe uh, you hate me enough uh, to want it to fail. Or maybe you don't communicate within yourself, etc., etc. There are so many things that can, can go wrong. So when it does happen, it's really like a miracle. So look at this miracle and, and say, with whom would you, uh, I mean, to whom would you go shake hands with in appreciation for the achievement, okay? <laughs> Was that nice? In a way, it was a bit slow, actually. It's I can never understand those machines. It, it actually played it slower than it should have. Uh, it was slow motion. Why? I don't know. We're trying to get the, the cables for, for a DVD uh, to work. But, but still, even in the slow tempo, I think it was nice. I think it was a good performance. So how come? What makes it a good performance? Who makes it a good performance? The audience. Absolutely, the audience. The customers. The customers. 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where this was taken? This was taken in Vienna. Now, Vienna, uh, Viennese audiences usually do not uh, interrupt the music by clapping. What you've seen here is the closest to a belly dancing feast, you know, <laughs> oriental style they ever get in Vienna. Like uh, Hafla. Yeah? Uh, with this, by the way, this, they haven't still. Um, uh, got so uh, 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 so the participation of the audience, the, 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 your customers who understand the culture well enough to know when to sit there quietly listening uh, in a very attentive way to what the professionals are doing, but then actually uh, becoming part of of, uh, of, of the concert of, of, of the playing. Absolutely, the audience. Um, who else? Is that maybe too trivial? A question? What? But, but, but how was it created? By the conductor. Oh, Gershon. You're a good friend of mine. Do you think it was created by the conductor? What would happen if the conductor would step off I and mean, just go, go away? Would the orchestra stop playing? What would happen? What? What would happen if he would step off? I, I, I don't know. Tell me. What do you think? <laughs> it's not about experience, it's about speculative, you know, fertile... Uh, the music's annotated, right? What? The music is annotated, so the part of it is the music, because they can read it, but then... They can read the music, yeah. So you're going to look maybe at each other more... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, 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 let's say you have written music in front of you. You have one note, yeah, written ahead of you. Can you visualize it? Okay, and then this note means clap your hands once. Okay, so you have the music, annotated music, you can all read the music, you are very professional in doing this. Now do it together, please. Synchronization. Okay, that wasn't a great success, it was a partial success. Do it again. Oh, now you're reacting to what I say. Do it again. <laughs> okay, so one can conduct even without conducting. Of course, we can have one, two, three, boom. Yeah, okay. You can do this, you can, uh, like a conductor, everybody knows that uh, the signal is supposed to come from here. So you look at me, let's do it together, and ready? I'm going to do and, okay? That was an explanation. Now do it, okay? <laughs> That's why we have rehearsals. <laughs> okay, and good. We'll rehearse later, yeah. the two of us. Um, okay, so uh, 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 what we have is synchronization. Yeah? And uh, do you think the Vienna Philharmonic playing Radetzky March, which is, you know, like the un unofficial uh, 
national anthem of Austria since the time of the Kaiser. They, 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 they know it so well, you know, the, the Vienna Philharmonic players. Uh, even if you would, uh, were to wake them up at three, 3 o'clock in the morning in their own bedrooms, they would still play together. And they don't all sleep in the same bedroom. Most, <laughs> some of them do, but most of them don't. Um, so, uh, synchronization. Uh, it, it, quite a simple problem for such a professional orchestra. It would be enough for the uh, concertmaster to stand up and say, guys, Padadam, padadam, pam, pam, pam. So we did it. Okay. So maybe there isn't such a great problem of synchronization. Um, but what other problems need to be solved? That's a new. I never thought of it this way. What other problems in, uh, need to be solved in order yes, to, to leadership? What? Leadership. leadership. Why do we need leadership? Why? Why is it not enough to have some somebody Set counting? The tone. And ba 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 ba. The, the pitch, the pitch is, 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 is fixed by the, by the music, written music. But the tone, the tone in a more metaphoric way. What? The balance. The balance. Dynamics. Dynamics. All these are attributes of interpretation. We need an interpretation. I mean, there's nothing in the world, no program can ever be uh, executed without uh, interpretation. Even even the the, 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 the uh, simplest uh, programs. Uh, imagine, uh, uh, I know my, my wife is sending me to the supermarket, uh, writing me a note. Please uh, get two yogurts and a loaf of bread. Let's be realistic. She doesn't uh, write please. I mean, all the rest. <laughs> is. So, you, uh, can you imagine the amount of interpretation you need to get those two yogurts right? Yeah. Of course, the practical solution would be. To call from the, yeah, yeah. so we, we share the same uh, uh, problem. Uh, anyhow, um, uh, um, interpretation. Now tell me, we have a piece which is uh, almost worn out by continuous playing. Everybody plays Marsh Radetzky in every Viennese evening. Uh, it always ends with this. Does it make the interpretation easier? On the contrary, harder, much harder. Because you want to rehearse with an orchestra, you just put the notes there in front of them and, and they all do, oh, come on, we don't need to do that. We know that. We'll do it in the concert. Don't worry. Yeah? Um, that's terrible. I mean, routine. They don't want to do it. Uh, so, so we have a problem of uh, interpretation. Now, whose interpretation? That's the major pro uh, uh, question, actually. Whose interpretation? We know the music was written by jo uh, Johann Schaus, the elder. Uh, the, uh, uh, but, 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 but maybe, the, 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 have you seen uh, lately a concert advertising, uh, um, I mean a, a poster advertising a concert? Could be the other way, but no? It looks like this. It's, it's quite strange. It's, uh, really, you have a large poster, and then you have, uh, let's say, in one line, the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. Hmm? All 120 uh, wonderful musicians squeezed into one line, and then conducted by Zubin Mehta. Yeah? And then, in very small print, you have people with minor contribution to the event. You have Mozart, Beethoven, <laughs> and, and, and Brahms, and people like that. I'm, I'm glad you're laughing, because it is a bit... Uh, I mean, nobody really thinks that Zubin Mehta is greater than Mozart, <coughs> except, of course, for... <laughs> it's, it's, it's not our problem. Uh, so, so, why is Mehta in large print and, 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 and Mozart in small print? OK, OK, there's a practical uh, man over there saying that the chances of Mozart writing a complaint letter to the Philharmonic are quite slim, while <laughs> Zubin Mehta happens to be the music director. And he actually pays the, uh, so, um, uh, right. But, but I think, I think that uh, we could assume that there is a deeper uh, uh, reason to it. And I, I would suggest that the, 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 the reason must have something to do with interpretation. I mean, the fact that you have a wonderful, uh, 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 amazing masterpiece as a work plan does not, of course, guarantee anything about the quality of the, of, of the executed work itself. So the first stage is to have an interpretation will, which will somehow put you with the piece at the cutting edge of what we know today about how to play Mozart. And not only how to play Mozart, but how to play Mozart in a way that will somehow bring the, uh, 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 first of all, the players, but then also the, the audiences. Even we here are a kind of audience to, to this performance. And we come together because there's something magnetic about it. Now, what would you say is, uh, was magnetic about this performance? First of all, the conductor. 
What, what about him? What about the conductor? Well, what is the fact? If you, if you try to characterize his mood, Joy, joy, the, the man was enjoying himself. And you have to know, it's not a joke. I, I, I sometimes show this uh, to serious people in serious uh, work, uh, work uh, contexts, like, you know, banking, senior management of a Swiss bank, and they get annoyed. Yeah. This kind of, this, uh, you come to work, how come you enjoy yourself so much? <laughs> something, something has to be wrong. <laughs> something is fishy. So, uh, but of course, we, uh, we all know, because you're all working people and you're all, uh, you're all having fun all, uh, most of the time, that uh, uh, these are not uh, contradictions. Or, on the contrary, if we want to get people to come and work with us, and, and also the audiences to come and work with us, actually work with us, we have to promise them joy. Well, after all, we're not paying them. Huh? We're not paying them. How much he enjoyed himself? What? Is it rare? Is it rare? Like the way he enjoyed himself, it's very rare. Uh, well, it, oof. wait and see. Wait and see. Okay, you'll tell me. I, 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 I know. So, so uh, uh, um, uh, this is obviously a part of what this guy does. And then um, bringing together all those uh, uh, circles of, of, of people around him, um, Obviously, there is something, uh, something also has to do with uh, a more professional aspect, but we won't get into this now because we'll do it later. What we'll do now is, uh, uh, in search of uh, 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 an, uh, an answer uh, to the question, whose interpretation, we're going to look at zooming meta, listen with, with a sort of a critical ear. I think I have to do this. When you look at it, we're saying it's very simple. You can really learn it in a half an hour. And then you ask, why is it so simple to do the public I'm sorry. Conducting is communication. You communicate with one musician, you communicate with a group in the orchestra, and you commu communicate with the orchestra as a whole. What you communicate to them, or to him or her, has to convince him or her, or the group, or the orchestra, of what your intentions are. No, 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 no. Your intentions come out of hopefully a deep knowledge of the score and therefore of the style. Now, an orchestra is made out of 110 minds, interpreters. Somebody has to decide from the upbeat. Profession of conductor that they need 
phenomenon. Great. That was zoom in meta on dope. I mean, again, it was too slow. It is as if it was smoking something the whole morning. I apologize for this, but we are, now we're going to go to the DVD, and it'll be OK from now. Don't get depressed. Um, so uh, listening to it with a critical ear, what do you think? Does it make sense or not? Yes. It does. Totally makes sense. Yeah, he said, what, what makes sense? What? He, said, he said a couple of important things. One is that conducting is communication. And that's conducting is communication. Thing. Absolutely true. Yes. The second thing that struck me was that he said it's 110 minds. He didn't say it's 110 instruments or 110 sounds. He said 110 minds. A good point for a very was, good point for Zubin. That was very critical. Yeah, I thought it was a very good. Uh, uh, um, but he said I have 10. Uh, 110 minds, interpreters in my orchestra, but is he using them as interpreters? No. no. Of course not. No. Well, no. He says there's one man in this organization who has, who sees the light at the end of the time. Only one. Yeah. What well, happens if this? Absolutely. So you're not convinced anymore. No. I mean, no, 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 no. that one point was very strange. I mean, if you say, I have 110 brilliant people, but I'm not going to use them. I know why, why Zubin says this. Zubin has to be, uh, I mean, happens to be uh, the conductor of the Israel Philharmonic. Can you imagine? <laughs> he has one, uh, 110 players. They're all fantastic players. But this guy studied his violin in Minsk. And this guy in Pinsk. And you know, Minsk and Pinsk, it's always you know, a great problem because we know that the Pinsk are much better than the Minsk. He says, OK, leave it to me. I'm, I'm just going to tell you what to do. You're uh, uh, wonderful players. You're pouring your heart out while playing. This is all fantastic, but don't do the thinking. I, I, uh, by the way, uh, you, you mentioned communications. Of course, communication is a big buzzword, but what sort of communication w uh, was he talking about? He said, I, as a conductor, need to have communication with each, uh, with each and every one of you. And then with groups in the orchestra, I and the group, and then me and the whole orchestra. What sort of communication did he not mention at all? <laughs> exactly our, our talk from before. Yeah, the, uh, nothing has to happen between. Now, Zubin knows very well that an orchestra cannot play if the musicians do not hear and listen actively to each other. An orchestra cannot play where the trombones that they do not hear what the violins are doing, or the English horn doesn't know what the bass here is playing. It cannot work this way. But somehow, he prefers to have everything go through him. Huh? They also need trust between each other. That's the right thing. And then it's the right what? There has to be trust. There, ha there has to be trust in the orchestra. Trust between is, uh, yeah, between the musicians. Well, but, but how will they build the trust if they're not supposed to communicate? They're all supposed to react to what he says. Now, OK, maybe I'm taking it a bit too far in, in a very one-sided way. Let's see if we can have uh, another great conductor. Um, I would say a truly great conductor, but I'm very polite today. Um, uh, by the name of Claudio Abado. And listen to what Abado says about, Abado here was just appointed to be music director of the Berlin Philharmonic. Now, he's obviously speaking in German, but we have an English translation, so it's OK. Um, uh, in the middle, we have an insert by a player in the orchestra, which also helps us because it gives us uh, the other um, uh, point of view. Says Abado. Oh, thank you. It's the right pitch. Uh,
Krieg und Stück mit deinem Geschäft, mit deinem Geschäft zu Pflanzen, mit deinem anderen, mit deinem anderen Pflanzen. So ist es manchmal im Umland, du machst nur eine kleine Gäste und kommst eine andere Pflanze. Was das really different or just a, mm, a different choice of words to describe the same exact situation? What do you think? That's a very different perspective. It is. It is. It said the weeness. We, yeah. It's very different than the I-ness. Okay, it's not me. It, it's, it's we that play the music. Uh, which is nice, but you know, a lot of people will go and say that and then, you know, don't, don't walk the talk or whatever. Uh, uh, in, in this case, we have the player saying what we expect from a conductor is not to be the source of everything. No, 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 no. He's very central, but only as a pole that sort of, you know, unifies, consolidates us, enables us. I think that the English translation was enabler. Yeah? It's a, it's a different thing. Now, you yeah. might think that it's a sort of false modesty. Yes, do you want to say? Can you, can you? I'm trying to compare it to forums that I recognize, be it companies or other social groups. Could it be that, that a large group of people look and um, want a leader um, in a different capacity or enormity according to what it is that they need? Because basically, to play a piece, after all, especially after having practiced it many times, is not the issue, but rather not thinking, not making the decisions, not leading. I'm just trying to see, I'm trying to understand the role of the conductor in. Do you see a difference between the, 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 their, their own descriptions of, of, of their, 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 their roles? Exactly well, to your question. What I'm missing, I'm missing the musicians here. Oh, the, you have one musician. The musician from the Berlin Philharmonic saying, what we want is somebody to consolidate our individual contributions. It's not like, okay, we're going to be executioner. Of, of you know whatever comes from him, but we have our own thinking. Now it's true, says um, Abado, that not everybody has the whole plan uh, in front of them. Uh, so I need to make them aware that why should play pom pom pom? You think it's a beautiful melody? Somebody else play pom 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 pom, pom and, and you're actually accompanying them. Or they need to be. I, I make them. A, aware of a certain uh, 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 truths about uh, the piece they might not be aware uh, of to begin with. So that means I make them see the light. Which light? <coughs> Something that happens to come from... Okay, but maybe that's not enough. Maybe that's not... There's uh, also a big uh, difference between doing something in real time and doing something in a, in a sort of uh, a parallel fashion where you might be bringing things together on and on. You might let somebody work on something and then bring them back two minutes or two days or two weeks or two years later. Right. And then something which has to happen in the yeah. same I think it's a matter of resolution, actually. Sure. If you yeah. Yeah, if you look at it, yeah, 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 it's just very condensed, what you see here. Yeah. True. In his last comment, he went beyond the name. See, his last comment, he yeah. said that how they get completely different sound from different conductors. Absolutely. And he's making a difference. Like Even this. Zubin said something about this mystical profession. I, I know what was mystical about his uh, account of the profession, but Abada does say that after all, yeah, there is the human element which is maybe inexplicable. I mean, you, we're doing exactly the same thing, but you look at me and you don't do it, while you look at uh, uh, Vasily and uh, Vitali, I'm sorry, uh, at Vitali, and, and, and he does the same gesture, but uh, you follow. So, yeah, or, or make a different sound. Absolutely. But the, 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 the um, most extreme reaction to the classical, very author authoritative uh, style of conducting came uh, um, uh, in the form of an orchestra that plays without a conductor. This is the Orpheus Orchestra from New York. Now, if you think uh, this was already invented in the high deck, well, Orpheus invented this some 30, 30 something years ago. <coughs> And they're doing fine. They're playing and, and having a wonderful career as an orchestra without a conductor. Now